Hey, what's good, y'all? This is your boy Chris back at it again with another video for you guys. Uh, what's good, Dream Squad? In the building, baby. Um, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, we do Tesla news, Tesla reactions, Elon Musk news. Um, we do we do Tesla vlogs on here. We talk anything and everything EV related on this channel. Um, I know you already seen the title. What we going to talk about today? So, uh, buckle in your seats. We got a lot of things to talk about. So, um, first things first. Uh, so the main topic today is, uh, I just want to talk about in 2024 is, is buying an EV really, um, worth it? Like is, is 2024 the year to switch over to an electric vehicle? Um, for real, I know a lot of people with inflation, I know with a lot, with a lot of inflation and stuff going on, you know, people are looking to, you know, save money and, um, you know, help out the environment and at the same time. So electric vehicles, you know, are kind of like the new, the new like thing to, to get. And, um, you want to really consider if you're looking to get into the electric vehicle, um, would be the registration taxes. The registration taxes for, uh, for instance, in Texas, um, you're looking at uh, four hundred dollars. They they now charge. This wasn't like this when I first got my electric vehicle, but now when you register a vehicle, a standard uh, vehicle registration fee. New EV owners must first pay a first time registration fee of four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars, ladies and gentlemen, and then after the first time. Register the registration fee and the fee for an EV registration renewal is two hundred dollars to contribute to the to the state highway fund uh, and laws and in incentives and things like that. So basically, uh, the government has found a way to make up their money since we're not going to the gas station. And I guess and when you go to the, in a in a regular combustion gas vehicle. Um, you pay taxes on the gas that you, when you go to the gas station, there's tax associated to that. And that helps go to like the roads, the construction and things like that. So since we just go to superchargers or we charge at home, I guess we don't, we're still using the same road. So we don't contribute to that. So they found a way, they found a way to, to get in our pockets, guys. So they found that way. So hey, I can't make this stuff up, you know, um, I would say, um, Number two would definitely be the EV uh, tax credit. Um, so with the EV tax credit, you know, I think they lowered it to, I think it's up to, it used to be 7,500. I think now, I believe now it's around $4,000 limited to 30% of the car's purchase price. Uh, and also something you might not know in order to claim that federal tax break on uh, your favorite qualifying that's the key word qualifying. And I'm gonna get into that in a second as to be a qualifying, uh, vehicle in 2023 or 2024, your modified adjusted gross income must not exceed 150,000. If you're single 225,000 or 300,000 married filing jointly. Um, and that that's a big deal. That's a big deal. So for, so up to $4,000, or four to seventy five hundred dollars. Um, I see a lot of mixed things on that, but that's not even the that's not even the crazy part. It's only on select vehicles, and it's mainly not for Tesla. It's like for the other. It's mainly for the lower for the other brands. So the Ford F one fifty Lightning, um, and the popular Ford Mustang Mach E is eligible for a, a partial electric vehicle tax credit of 3750 for the 2023 tax year. However, Ford officials have indicated that this model doesn't qualify for the federal tax credit as of January 1st, 2024. That's crazy. The Lightning uh, qualifies for a 2024 tax break. I uh, was, was eligible for the full 7500 2023. So you know, just just go do your research. Just see if your your EV or the EV you're looking to get qualifies for that uh, EV tax credit. You know, it's it's a wide range. It seems like it depends on what vehicle you're looking at determines the determines the amount of tax credit you can you can claim on your taxes. Um, so 
Definitely look into that. That that's crazy. And uh, so the number three reason would be in 2025 they will be making the Tesla charging port, the universal charging port. So if you have a vehicle like a Ford or Volkswagen electric vehicle or any other electric vehicle besides Tesla, you you'll have that in your car, and they're also allowing other EVs to charge at Tesla superchargers. Um, starting, you know, they're kind of rolling it out now, and by this time next year, um, they're supposed to be allowing you know all electric vehicles to be able to charge at the at the superchargers. So that's that's a big plus. You know, that makes it a lot more convenient. You know, the Tesla supercharger network is. Um, it's pretty efficient, you know, they're every couple of miles and, you know, I never had a problem kind of finding a supercharger no matter where I travel to, you know, besides the charge times, you know, I have no problem. I've had no problem with that. So um, That's a big plus uh, if you're looking to get in the game and it'll just make it a lot more convenient as they start growing the charging networks uh, for all these electric vehicles as people start buying more EV vehicles, you know? So that's something that, that's something to consider also. Uh, my number four reason would definitely be um, just simple, just environmental um, and climate benefits to have an EV. You know, the emissions in, you know, major cities are kind of causing global warming and things like that. So, you know, the less combustion, combustion, vehicles on the road, uh, the better you're, you know, you're helping out the environment. So, you know, who want, who doesn't want to do that? Come on. My number five reason, um, for definitely getting an EV is definitely the technology and the convenience of this technology. When you're talking about, um, I can only, I can mainly speak for the Tesla app because I don't have any other, uh, I don't have the other brands, uh, apps, but Tesla app, you can, basically remote start your car, you can summon it. Um, the car has like 360 dash cameras all around it. Um, if you get an accident or you witness something, if you get in a crash or you witness an accident, you can just hit a button and you can just record something. Your car is parked up. Um, somebody breaks in your car, you have the recording of it. Um, you, 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 it's just, it's just so convenient to me. Um, the, the computer that's in the dash, you could play video games. You know, you can go on and on. You can watch movies, Netflix, things like that. Um, you know, the autopilot, um, there's, there's so much stuff that you can do in an EV vehicle and the technology is amazing. The, the LIDAR that's in the cameras and, and sensors, it's just amazing. You know, you know, we could talk all day about the technology that comes in a lot of these electric vehicles that I think is really cool and really convenient. Just saying the the ease of service, you know, um, a lot of the times with my Tesla, um, <clears throat> the service the service providers can usually come come to my location if it's like a simple fix. Uh, they have def they have um, technicians that would just come up to your house or wherever you're at, and they'll come fix the issue. If it's not something they can just fix at your house. Um, of course you could bring it in and, you know, I haven't had any, most of my stuff is kind of just like within my warranty type of thing. It's like, you know, uh, besides you just have to pay for tires, rotors, um, you know, windshield wiper fluid. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, unfortunately, if you do, if something does happen to your battery out of warranty, um, you know, you're talking about anywhere from believe it's anywhere from 10 to $30,000. So that's a big expense, but, um, I haven't really seen anybody really have that issue unless you're like, a a share, a ride shared Uber driver or something like that. And, um, you have like super high mileage on it already, but you know, if you're just driving it regularly around town and stuff like that, um, and you're not supercharging it all the time. Cause you know, even though supercharging is not good for your battery, you know, you're not going to have no issues. So definitely a plus ease of service. I think it's amazing and uh, definitely save a lot of money there. I can tell you that for sure. Charging stations and uh, the, the charging network. I know we kind of went over that, but, you know, it's just super. Uh, it is convenient. Um, <laughs> not as convenient as going to a gas station, of course. You know, gas is like 
four gas stations in my neighborhood. So I, and there's no superchargers. There's the closest supercharger is probably like 15, 20 minutes away. So, um, when I say convenient, you know, that's relative to an electric, if you got an electric vehicle, you know what I mean? Um, convenient to somebody that owns an electric vehicle. Obviously I do most of my charging at home anyway, it charges in my garage, but, um, convenient as you know if you on the if you go into the out to the mall or something there's usually a supercharger or maybe like a a merit uh, like a charge point charger for evs or like a charge america charger um there's, there's usually somewhere to charge your vehicle if you're like at the mall or some somewhere like it's like he- highly populated i think tesla and stuff uh they try to place charges there for people who, people that have electric vehicles. Um, I know something a lot in Washington, a lot, or at least in the Washington area, uh, when I was out there, uh, a lot of the super, the grocery stores would have uh, uh, chargers right outside in the parking lot for free, actually. So I used to like that. I used to enjoy that a lot. And, you know, um, actually the movie theaters ha- out here has uh, some chargers out there. Um, so uh, I think I think that's something that they're definitely improving on. If you don't have a Tesla, I think the network is kind of uh, it's kind of lacking. But I think once the superchargers are available to those that don't have a Tesla, I think that that network will greatly improve. If you got something like a like a Cadillac Lyric or something like that, um, you'll 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 have a way better experience. You know, all those Mustang Mach-E's and the four lightnings. I think you'll have a way better experience once you're able to go charge up at a Tesla supercharger. Granted, if it, uh, if it works the way it's supposed to for those that don't have a Tesla. So I'll cross my fingers for y'all, but it it should, I think y'all still going through the, through the app. So it should hopefully work. Not really a Tesla, but, to to really, uh, invest in Tesla would be like the apps to the stock right now. The Tesla stock is it's a great time this year. Uh, Tesla's been going through Tesla specifically has been going through. Eh, I would kind of say kind of like a rough patch. You know, a lot of things been a lot of negative press has been going on since the little Arctic um, climate kind of pushed into like the Midwest and those um, northern states like Illinois and stuff like that. When they had the negative degree weather, uh, a lot of the the superchargers were given a lot of issues. People were bricking their Teslas and they weren't able to charge long charge times at the superchargers. Um, people were getting their car towed uh, and it was just, it was just bananas. You got Teslas blowing up well, catching on fire on the highways and people's garages and stuff like that. So it's been a bad couple of weeks uh, or a month for Tesla and <laughs> So to people that to people that are investors in stocks and stuff like that, uh, you know, it's the perfect time to buy. So definitely look into getting yourself a, a te- some Tesla stock. Um, hopefully they address a lot of the issues I've kind of brought up. But, you know, as you can see, there's a lot of there's a lot more pros than there is cons. So, you know, you just got to weigh out uh, what works best for you. Um, let me know what y'all think down in the comments below. Uh, what y'all think about this? Um, and once again, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It's your boy, Chris, and I'm out.